1991, I was fortunate to do a mine and education certificate course at Murray House College with the brilliant mine artist, Pat Casel. Now, those of you of a certain age might remember Pat in the 1960s and into the 70s when she was alongside Tony Hart in a TV programme called Vision On. Well, in the 90s, she was living in Edinburgh and her course that I managed to get on was absolutely fascinating. We teachers that uh, took the course, we, we would always ask Pat to to show us some of our, our mime artistry, her, her techniques. We'd ask her to show us how to go up the stairs, how to walk like an animal or trap herself in a, in a box. And it was just magic to watch her doing all these brilliant mime techniques. And she must have got actually really fed up of us asking her because of course mime in education um, was about, about a lot more than just um, mind techniques. Uh, we'd learn how to do short games and exercises, little scenes, and then we'd take them back to our, our classrooms. We were all primary school teachers and we'd try them out basically on, on the children who were teaching. And I was teaching a fairly behavioural primary seven class that's aged about 11, 34 of them. And um, I'd, I'd done a lot of drama with them. They loved drama and it was just a great way of getting their attention. But I wasn't sure about mime, uh, where they weren't going to be talking. Anyway, I was astonished at the response that I got when we tried it out. They just loved doing it. They were really, I'd never seen them so focused. Um, and uh, from the small exercises and things that I did with them, they developed, developed stories from there. They developed plays. Uh, it just went on and on and on and they, they were able to observe each other and, and try out um, quite funny things at times. And, and the non-academic children really seemed to shine. And the shy ones as well, when the language was, was kind of taken away, it sort of opened the door to them. It, 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 was, it was strange, but it was marvellous. Um, and uh, Pat would come out and she would visit and uh, you know, we talk about what was happening and, and, and so on. And um, it really occurred to me that mine was just such a magical engager. And everybody could see that a tiny, tiny gesture or movement could just say more than any amount of words ever could. And I do think that the, the students really got that. Um, and if you think about it, uh, if you are in the company of somebody that doesn't speak the same language as you and you, you need directions or you need to communicate with that person, you're soon reverting to this, this primal sort of communication and, and in your miming and, and your signing. And yeah, I think that you know we really should be using that in, in our teaching if, if we can, use it to the advantage, especially, especially for those children for whom, you know, speaking and, and, and speaking out and using vocabulary seems a little bit scary. I mean, we can use mime for so many different things. There's the action, the reaction, the observation, simple and captivating storytelling, modifying behaviour for sure, and that focus. And primary teachers often, often ask us uh, to um, use drama to improve their students' vocabulary and their speaking generally. And they're often surprised when we say, OK, right, we'll start with mine. Because that seems to them a little bit sort of counterintuitive. You know, we want to work on their speaking, but you're actually, you're taking it away. But what I've learned from, from these early days and from, from doing mime a lot, that when we take it away, we are opening that door to those children who are having the most problems um, with their speaking and their confidence in speaking. And actually, I've, I've got a wee quote here from one of Pat's, Pat's books. You look at the state of this book, Motives for Mime, very well read. Pat, kind of 
captured that by saying, the constant struggle to come to terms with vocabulary and grammar can cause the imagination and creative forces to dry up. In mind, however, we perceive and take action because we see what is happening. And this spontaneity can bring about a great release. And I just think that that is just so true. I've seen it happen over and over again. So um, I heard a few years back that actually Pat Casel died. She, she, she died in 2009. And it wasn't well publicised at all. Um, I could see online that people hadn't known and were just hearing about it years later. She, she had been in Italy at the time. But those of us who met her, you know, we will never forget her as a, a very rare educational pioneer who saw right there in front of her that the teaching techniques that make a difference and make the biggest impact on student learning. And they're not complicated, but teachers really need to be open to trying them out. So as a tribute to Pat Casel then, as my tribute to Pat Casel, um, I highly recommend that whether you're a, a primary school teacher, a drama teacher, you might be a language teacher, but if you're working in any sort of a way with, uh, interactively with, with young, young people, please remember the magic of mime and use it. Um, we'll uh, put down in the, in the description on, on this video a, a, a link uh, to some complimentary mind games and techniques that, that you could actually you could try out and see how you get on. So if you're interested in, in our work, um, you can uh, smash the like button on here and su subscribe to our channel. That would be absolutely great. And I'm going to have another tip for you, another top tip for you within the next few days. Thanks for watching.